Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Lucy Wamaida Machugu, uh, the Vice President Kenyatta University, and uh, I want to represent all students in the universities in Kenya because uh, actually we are on the streets and uh, we would wish to inquire some answers from you. First is to appreciate uh, the government and the Ministry of Education because uh, you've set uh, an event on the 9th uh, of August at KICD for all the student leaders and all the students to discuss on the funding model. So some of the questions I would wish uh, to inquire answers from you, Mr. President. Number one, why did you come up with the funding model? How does the funding model work? Do you feel like the implementation of the funding is okay? What is the criteria used to group people to different categories? That is about the funding model. Number two, the accommodation prices in the universities. That is the hostel prices. They are very expensive for us to afford. Mr. President, what are you doing about this? We cannot be able to afford houses or hostels where we are living in universities. What are you doing, Mr. President, about this? Something else about the job opportunities. Once we graduate from the university, we are told maybe when you go and seek for a job opportunity, we are asked to give a five-year work experience or a three-year work experience. Yet, we've just graduated. Where will we get the experience from if you are not given the chance to, ex to get the, the experience? So, Mr. President, how can you help us on that? Lastly, Mr. President, what are you doing to re-engineer the National Youth Council? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Lucy. And by the way, you are very smart. Now, um, let me say, you've asked me very two fundamental questions. The new university's funding model, why? Very important question, why? When I came into office, the universities were struggling. They had a 60 billion shilling debt. Many universities were paying their lecturers half the price, half, half the salary. It was near a crisis. And many vice chancellors agree with me. So it became necessary. And you know, I have a history. Once upon a time, I was minister for higher education. So I understand that space pretty well. And when I came into office then as a Minister for Higher Education, I am the one who developed and, and created the space around our Tibets because there was a missing gap in our education system. I am very proud that today our Tibets are a big portion of our higher education learning infrastructure. Let me go back to the funding model. The funding model, by the way, affects both our university students and also affects our Tibet students. So what did I do? I did three things. Number one, we made a commitment as government that we are going to give every student 80% scholarship and loan. But because we could not afford especially because the number of students, when we made that commitment, it was like 15 years ago. But you know, as the numbers increased in the university, it became difficult for us to meet that commitment. And so what ended up happening was that while we committed to pay 80%, we ended up paying 50%, some cases 45%. So what happened? There was a huge funding cut in our universities, a huge funding gap in our universities. And our universities were struggling. They couldn't pay for services, they couldn't pay lecturers, they couldn't uh, run their programs, and we ended up with affecting the quality of education in our universities. 
You couldn't attend as many labs as, you, as was required. You couldn't attend as many practicals as you required. We ended up compromising on our education. So what did I do? I said, we need to be honest with ourselves. And we said, there are parents like William Ruto who can afford. Why would William Ruto be given 80 why would the child of William Ruto be given 80% scholarship? The same as a child of Mama Mboga. What happens is that both our children end up suffering. So we changed the model. We said, since there is a means testing instrument that has been used for 20 years to assess every student on the basis of the information they supply, and it has worked in Kenya for 20 years, let us use that means testing instruments, instrument that is available at the Higher Education Loans Board to assess every student. And we change the model so that children from vulnerable families, children from parents who are less endowed, we move them from getting 80% to getting 95%. And children from parents like myself, we move them from getting 80%, we move them to 60%. Because we can afford. Right? So we had five categories. We changed it into five categories. And you know what, Lucy? Because of the change in that model, we also said that scholarship is going to be available on application. Because, you know, the old model, every student, without even applying, they were given scholarship. But there are parents who do not need it. And for your information, 20% of students last year did not apply for scholarship, they went and their parents paid because they didn't need it. What has happened? Of that 20% of the students, we now have more money to pay for children from vulnerable families. That is how we, the model has changed. So we now have five categories. We have those that get 95%, we have those that get 90 we have those that get 70 we have those that get 60 and we have categorized and we are using what we are calling an instrument called, called means testing instrument that tests the ability of parents. We will continue to perfect, I am, we'll continue to perfect that instrument. There will always be maybe a problem here and there, but we will make sure that we keep that program so that we increase the level of funding in our universities. What has happened? Because of this new funding model, we have had to increase money that we are putting in the education of our university students from about 45 billion. This year, we put 82 billion shillings. We are putting more money because we have to be realistic. We cannot send our kids to school and we haven't provided for funding for them to go and be taught, we would be cheating our children. If we tell them go to school and we cannot pay the lecturers in school, we cannot pay for their classes, we cannot run the programs. So that is why I have decided I am spending more money in education. It's much more expensive for me, but it is better to have students who graduate when they have gone through proper school, with proper learning, with their parents, with their teachers paid and their lecturers paid, and we have increased the budget for education in that manner. Number two, I know there is a problem. And the problem is a problem of communication. Because many parents received an admission and they saw there the cost, the cost, the course cost 300,000. Then the parents said, okay, where am I going to find these 300,000? I have since instructed the ministry that Although the cost is 300,000, there must be clarity that this cost is 300,000, yes, but 
a parent can get up to 95% scholarship and loan of that, of, that, of that amount. So I think now there is going to be greater communication so that parents can understand that whatever it is that is appearing on those admission letters is not the money demanded from them. It is just the cost of the course. But that course will be met largely by scholarship, partly by loan, and very, uh, in, in, uh, very insignificantly by parents paying uh, the fee they have been paying. Um, I have told you why. It is work in progress. This is the first year we are implementing. I know there are still teething problems, but we will want to work with student leaders like you, Lucy, and others so that we can properly explain. And I really want to uh, invite student leaders from universities. I am prepared to engage with them. I am ready to engage with them because I am doing what is best for all our university edu uh, education. I am very passionate about education, and, and, and it is the greatest equalizer. It is the reason why I decided to hire 56,000 new teachers, because I believe education is the greatest equalizer, and no child should be locked out from education. <laughs> Hostels. Lucy has said, and I agree with you, I have been to many parts of Kenya and students live in squalor. They live in very bad conditions. They live sometimes in slums, and they live in very dangerous places. And that is why I have made the decision that we are going to work with our Ministry of Housing. We are going to leverage on our housing fund to support our hostels in our universities. I came from Taita Taveta today. I made an announcement in Taita Taveta that Taita Taveta University, we're going to build 1,500 hostels. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Mr. President, now you can take it to your students. So we are going to have, and, and, and they, will, they will pay for them, but they will pay a reasonable amount not the amount that you are now paying in very complicated neighborhoods. And we're going to do that for our TVETs, we're going to do that for our universities, so that our university students can live in decent uh, neighborhoods. I was, for example, in Alupe University in Busia uh, last year, and the students were living miles away. I was in Bukura uh, Technical Training College, and the students were asking me to put lights because they were living in a very far place, and sometimes at night when they come, when they, when they go late, they were being mugged along the way. So we are also providing infrastructure for hostels in uh, all our universities going forward. We are going to, it's going to be progressive. We can't build all of them at the same time, but the journey is going to start so that we can deal with that challenge. And you have helped me answer the question about education, somebody had asked me, my good friend, the first uh, uh, gentleman who had asked a question there. 